me now, Joe Tacopina. Joe, thanks for joining us this morning. Why don't you start Thank out you, by George. giving us some insight into what President Trump is thinking and feeling right now? He's gearing up for a, a battle. Um, you know, this is something that obviously we believe is a political persecution, and I think people on both sides of the aisle believe that, that it's a complete abuse of power. Um, he's a tough guy, George, as you know, and he's someone who's going to be ready for this fight. Um, we're ready for this fight, and, and I look forward to moving this thing along as quickly as possible to exonerate him, um, despite what, what it seems to be doing in the polls. What evidence do you have the Democrats see this as political persecution? What? Sorry, what's that? What evidence do you have that Democrats see this as political persecution? You said people on both sides of the, of the aisle oh, see this as yeah, political persecution. I mean, there's been, I mean, look, there's been, there's not only articles have come out from the New York Times, Financial Times and whatnot saying this would be a, a grave miscarriage of justice, a mistake to bring this case, but I've heard Democrats coming out on, on various talk shows and, and, and radio shows and whatnot saying that this is not the case. Not that they're supporting Donald Trump or embracing him, but that's, what I, that's my point all along, George. It shouldn't matter what side of the aisle you sit. Um, if you're an American and you're concerned about rule of law, there should be no scenario where you want this to happen because we all know, and if you're intellectually honest, we all know that had Donald Trump not been Donald Trump and was John Smith, this case never would have been brought. If he was not running for re-election, there's no way this case would have been brought. This case is not even legally sufficient. Um, factually, it's a joke, and it won't survive a challenge of, of law in a courtroom. You've had the you federal can't. prosecutors look at this case and... Go ahead, George. You can't know that for sure. No one's seen the charges. There are at least 24 charges, according to most reports, perhaps up to 34. Right. You haven't seen the charges. I haven't seen the charges. You don't know right. what's but behind that right now. Yeah. Oh, I do know it, George. I mean, come on. You, look, you, they can extrapolate counts and, and make one thing into five counts and say, you know, this check, uh, each individual checks account or each entry's account. But we all, we do all know that it has to do with a confidential settlement agreement, a completely legal confidential settlement agreement with Stormy Daniels, her attorney, uh, Michael Cohen her, and her attorney signed that together. Donald Trump did not. Um, we do know it has to do with that. So that's what this is about. And, and the entries into the ledgers would be misdemeanors, and they're not even false, but they would be misdemeanors and way past the statute of limitations. So you had to cobble some misdemeanors together to show that it was done with intent to cover up another crime, and that crime would be a violation of federal campaign law, which the FEC said did not happen. The U.S. Attorney's Office of the Southern District said did not happen. So I, I, I really am, am not going to be shocked to see what's in this indictment. I'm, I'm going to be curious, of course, but we do know that the counts revolve around the interaction with this settlement agreement with Stormy Daniels. What should we expect to see on Tuesday exactly? <laughs> That's a great question, George. Um, I, you know, this is unprecedented. I don't know. I've done a million arraignments in that courthouse um, with, with celebrities and whatnot, but this is a whole different thing. Um, we have Secret Service involved. Um, I understand that closing the courthouse for the afternoon. Um, I, I just don't know what to expect to see. Hopefully, what I, what I hope is that we get in and out of there as quickly as possible, that it's, a, at the end of the day, a typical arraignment where we stand before the judge, we say not guilty, we set schedules to file motions and whatnot or discovery, and we move forward and, and, and get out of there. I mean, look, I understand there's, you know, a lot of emotion on both sides of the aisle here. Um, for me, as a litigator, as a lawyer, I want this to be done as smoothly and quickly as possible and begin this fight to, to really... Um, put justice back on course to the degree we can, because I've said once the rule of law falls in this country or is stretched so far to try and get a political opponent, it's often hard to get that rule of law back to its original shape. Will, will President Trump hold a press conference on Tuesday following the arraignment? I, George, honestly, I can't answer that question. I don't know what the president's plans are. Um, we've been speaking, but, you know, he, he, he does Trump better than anybody, and uh, he's not afraid to speak. He's not afraid to encounter confrontation. Um, but again, I think that's a decision he'll make, his PR team will make, and maybe even the Secret Service um, in conjunction with that. But, but we'll have to wait and see. Bloomberg is reporting that your team may seek to move the trial to Staten Island. Is that on the table? No. That, I mean, here's what's on the table. Everything's on the table. Um, I, I read that article and I, I chuckled. I mean, there's been no discussion of that whatsoever. We haven't seen, like you pointed out earlier, we haven't seen the indictment yet. Um, it, it's way too premature to start worrying about venue changes until we really see the indictment and, and grapple with the legal issues. And there's, before you make motions like venue changes, you have to do some, some research. Um, we're way too early to start deciding what motions we're going to file or not file. Um, and, and we do need to see the indictment and, and get to work. I mean, look, but President is Trump, the beginning. Um, but President Trump has attacked the judge. Is that your team's official legal position? Do you believe the judge is biased? 
No, I don't believe the judge is biased. I mean, the president's entitled to his own opinion. Look, he's been the victim of a political persecution. You, you know, I, George, you don't have to subscribe to it. I, I honestly don't care. It's a fact. It is a fact because anyone other than Donald Trump would not have been prosecuted for this ridiculous factual scenario. But if you don't believe do the, believe the, the judge, the judge is biased, biased no. why is the president saying so? I'm, you're interviewing me, George, right? I, I'm, but you're I'm his not attorney. Speaking for anyone else except me. Yeah, I'm, but I'm his attorney, but I'm myself. I, I, I don't, I'm not his PR person. I'm not a spokesperson. He's entitled to his own opinion. And what he's been through, quite frankly, uh, I, I don't blame him for feeling the way he feels. You're asking me my opinion. Do I think the judge is biased? Of course not. How could I subscribe to that when I've had no interactions with the judge that would lead me to believe he's biased? So the answer to that, your question is, my response is absolutely not. Joe Tacopino, thanks very much. Okay, George, thank you.